Hello everyone, my name is Salar and this is Sal DEM channel. This lecture is about simulation of Brinell hardness test method using Abacus. Okay, but before heading to the simulation part, we need to discuss some fundamentals of this test to make it easier in our simulation. The outcome of this test is BHN or Brinell hardness number, which refers to the amount of hardness of a material. And what is hardness? Hardness is a characteristic of a material and it's actually not a fundamental physical property. And as you can see, it is defined as the resistance to indentation, which it is determined by measuring the permanent depth of the indentation. More simply, when using a fixed force and a given indenter, the smaller the indentation, the harder the material. Clear. And what is the Brinell hardness test method? The Brinell hardness test method used to determine Brinell hardness, which is the BHN, and is defined as ASTM E10 standard, but, and usually used for structures with coarse uh, structures like casting or forgings. But what is happening during this test? During this test, we are applying a predetermined load, which is P, I'm referring to the formula, to a carbide ball with fixed diameter, which is the uppercase D, and we held this predetermined force for a predetermined time, and then remove this force. The resulting pressure is measured with a specially designed Brinell microscope or optical systems across at least two diameters, usually at right angles to each other, and these results are the lowercase d. Okay. Here is the geometry of our simula simulation, which we using a carbide ball with uh, 10 millimeter diameter, and actually we are using a specimen with, with 50 millimeter diameter and the height of 10 millimeter. So I just want to make a point. Note that uh, during our simulation, we are not going to use determined predetermined forces because Abacus usually doesn't converge by using forces. So we are going to, instead of using force, we are going to use displacement. So displacement boundary conditions, which we will transform this uh, data and results by using this uh, table and the strain energy to measure and determine the applying force and then reach to the BHN number. Let's head to the simulation part. As always, the first part of our simulation is to create parts. You could do your modeling stage in a CAD software such as SolidWorks or the other software and import your model to the workspace of Abacus. And also you can use the part module of Abacus. In this case, I'm going to use part module and also, according to the first stage of our video, we have two parts, which is a ball indenter with the radius of five, with the radius of 10 millimeter, sorry. And also we have a sample with a radius of 50 millimeter and a height of 10 millimeter. So let's create our test sample. Firstly, I choose the proper name test sample. I am going to use the axisymmetric modeling space in this uh, simulation because it makes our simulation very faster and also we have the option to have the whole model at the visualization stage. So for the type of the um, type of the part I'm going to use deformable type because as you know the test sample of this simulation will have a lot of plastic deformation during the test. And also I'm going to use shell for the base feature with an approximate size of 200 millimeters. Okay. I'm going to create a rectangle with a starting point of 0, 0.0. Okay. And also I'm going to choose 25 and 10 for the second point as the radius of our sample is 25 and the height is 10. Okay. We are finished here. Okay, this is our test sample. So let's create the ball indenter. Ball, okay. It's also used the modeling space of axis symmetric. But in this case, I'm going to use discrete rigid type because I don't want any deformation in my ball indenter. But the approximate size is also the same. OK, 
okay everything's okay uh, note that if you do your modeling part properly and assemble uh, actually actually if you assemble the geometry of your simulation properly you have less things to do in your assembly module in this case I'm going to draw my arc within a starting point of zero and then which is actually the upper side of my test sample I'm going to choose this point for the second point and this point as the second point third point sorry okay I am uh, I'm also going to add a reference point to this point because I'm going to use this reference point in my boundary conditions to apply deform uh, to apply displacement or applying forces to my body in that okay everything's finished here let's move to the next part for the property module as I previously mentioned the test sample material is brass so let's create the material I'm gonna call it brass note that you could add any descriptions uh, to this material so if you came back to the simulation you have more details about what you have done before and in this case we don't have uh, we don't need to add density uh, so I also I start with elastic properties which is a hundred gigapascal and also we had a position ratio of 0 0.34 I'm gonna add some plastic properties okay I'm going to start with yield point which is 110 and also I'm gonna give the zero to plastic history note that ev uh, in every simulations we assign zero to plastic strain of the yield point okay I am I'm also going to add a 300 and 0 0.8 plastic strain as we have a very soft material okay let's finish this part I'm going to choose test sample and I'm going to create a section which is a section brass which is solid and homogeneous and also I assign brass material to this section and I'm going to assign this section to my test specimen everything's fine okay let's move to the next part okay the assembly module I'm going to import my models ball and test samples this is the note that I mentioned in part module if I'm not mistaken as you see I have nothing to do with uh, translating or moving my models as they are already fully defined in the right places so I'm going to create two surfaces and use these surfaces in uh, future modules okay the first surface is surface ball I'm going to call it surface B because it makes it shorter I'm gonna click on this edge then and as you can see Abacus are asking me to choose the surface I'm going to choose the yellow surface because the outer surface of this ball are going to have contacts with my test specimens so I'm going to choose yellow also the other surface would be test sample nice continue and I'm going to choose this surface which is the surface that are have contacts that are in contact with my ball indenter okay okay everything is assembly is done let's move to the next module for the mo step module I'm going to create a step which I'm gonna call it step indentation and also I'm going to use the static general product type and make sure that you turn on your analgium and also I'm going to change the increment size to 0.001 everything I think it's okay let's move to the next module the next module is interaction module I'm going to create a contact I'm also going to apply a tangential behavior with a penalty penalty type also I'm going to assign 0 0.5 friction coefficient 
and the next thing that I'm going to apply is creating a surface to surface contact for the standard type and I'm going to choose the surface of ball as the first surface and the surface of the sample for the second surface as you see the contact interaction is applied and everything is set to move to the next module based on the geometry of our uh, simulation I'm going to fully define an encaster the bottom side of my sample and I'm also going to apply a displacement to the RP reference point uh, through the minus y axis you may ask why displacement because we have force in our formula so if we do if we do use the force instead of displacement in abacus our simulation doesn't converge at all so we need to use displacement and then i will tell you how to uh, convert the displacement to force uh, to actually calculate your results at the final stage of your simulation so firstly let's fully define and encaster our uh, bottom side of the sample okay and also I'm going to apply a one millimeter displacement to my RP point through the y-axis okay everything's fully defined and set so let's move to the next module for the mesh module uh, we are going to mesh our parts separately okay the first is our test sample we are going to choose the medial axis algorithm okay I'm going to assign 0.5 global size it's okay and also check the element library and the type of our element which is actually axis symmetric in the default type of meshing but I usually prefer to check everything okay let's assign mesh everything is fully under control and very good okay let's move to the ball I'm going to assign 0 0.5 global size again the let's check the types everything is okay okay let's apply the mesh okay everything's fully defined as you can see let's move to the next module okay the job module I'm going to create job HN with the model one okay everything is okay let's check our data firstly always check your simulation before it's running okay I'm going to give the permission check completed everything is okay so I'm going to run the simulation and after that we could wait for the final part of the simulation okay the simulation has finished after 60 increments and let's see the results okay this is the 2d view of our result so we could use just the sweeping and extruding option to see the whole model and or if you want you can have a half model or or any amount of the model you need okay let's see what is happening here very nice and smooth okay for the calculation part you need to go to the create xy data odb history output you need to come down and find a strain energy plot it and you could use the data of this plot plot with this formula to find the amount of applying force and then you can calculate the brinell hardness number with the force and the other 
uh, desired data like the ammeters which you already have to find out about the BHN number of your material so uh, do not hesitate on asking questions through LinkedIn or comments or even you can send emails so have a nice day goodbye